Hi everybody, this is a quick video on reliability of our data collection methods. You guys can read over the objectives. For today, we're going to talk about why it's important to have reliability checks. We're going to talk about total agreement and overall agreement, and then we're going to take, talk about some factors that can affect reliability. So it is important to check reliability because a lot of times we as humans are recording whether the behavior occurred or did not occur. And because we're human, we're subject to human error because we are not perfect. So having reliability checks every once in a while when you're going through data collection ensures that your data collection method is reliable and is solid and is sound. And that's really important because when we collect data, our data are what we use to evaluate an intervention. So ensuring that our data are reliable is important for us to make really good decisions regarding our interventions. Okay, with reliability in behavior analysis, we call this inner observer agreement or IOA. So basically you have an object or phenomenon for, or a behavior, <laughs> for example, little Annie is dancing, and you're gonna have two people independently observe that behavior. I want to stress the word independent. So these two people should not be sitting right next to each other, seeing if the other one recorded whether, their, whether the behavior occurred or did not occur. My suggestion would be if the two observers are observing at the same time, that they sit across the room from each other, or maybe you record the behavior and one observes it in real time and one goes back and watches the recording, whatever it is, just make sure that those are two independent observations. And then what you're gonna, you guys are going to do is you're going to take the data from each observer and you're going to calculate an agreement score and it's going to come out as a percentage. So the percentage of the amount that you guys agree that the behavior occurred or did not occur. If you get 80% or above, then you're good and you can conclude that your data collection system is reliable. If you get less than 80%, then you might have to do some training with the specific behavior that you're observing or your behavioral definition. All right, I'm gonna talk about two different types of agreement and there are more ways to calculate IOA, but these are two really simple ways to calculate IOA. When you guys are teaching, this is probably the last thing on your mind. So hopefully you guys remember this little video and every once in a while you can check your reliability. Super easy to do with these two methods. So total agreement you can use with your dimensions of behavior. So frequency, latency, duration, things like that. With frequency, remember if you're using frequency, it's possible that you would be doing an event recording system. So you have your observation period and every time the behavior occurred during your observation period, you're gonna put a little tally mark. Now you're gonna have, like I said, two observers. So observer one within a five minute period tallied 15 marks and observer two recorded 12. What you're going to do is you're going to put the lower number divided by the higher number and multiply by 100. So for, the, for this example, you're going to do 12 divided by 15 times 100 and you're going to get that percentage score. And in this example, it was 80%. So we're good. Remember, 80% or higher is fine. You can also do this with duration or latency, like I mentioned. These are time measures. So you're going to have your two observers and you're going to get um, a total number of minutes that the behavior occurred and you're going to put the shorter number of minutes over the longer minutes over the longer number of minutes multiply by 100 and get your score now with total agreement there are some disadvantages that you just need to be aware of the first one is that you aren't really sure since you get a tally since you get a total mark and you're dividing those totals if the observers are agreeing on the same behaviors. So for instance, look at this chart. You have interval one and observer one, observer two. Well, in the first interval, observer one records one instance or observer two records zero. Um, interval four, observer one occurs two, records two instances where observer two only records one. And when you get down to the bottom in tallium, the sum is both five. So five divided by five times 100 is 100%. So if you do total agreement with this example, you're gonna get 100%. But when you actually look at the behaviors that are being recorded, they're not the same. Now, 
in the classroom, if you have a behavior that is very discreet, has a clear start and stop, very easy to record, this probably isn't an issue. But if you get to a behavior that's a little bit more difficult, then this is something to take into account. Also, total agreement is kind of difficult with high rate behaviors. For example, if you have a kid who taps his pencil constantly and you want to record that, well, that's really hard. Um, tapping the pencil can happen at very high rates and it can be hard to record and therefore total agreement might be hard to calculate. The next type of agreement you would use with your interval or time sampling. And so basically you're gonna go through your intervals. Remember, say we have partial interval recording and you're gonna have two observers. If the behavior occurred at any time during the interval, you get a plus. If it didn't, you get a minus. So you can go through and look at your partial interval recording for observer one and observer two. And then you wanna compare those intervals and see if you agree if that the behavior occurred or didn't occur. So let's look at interval one. Observer one said the behavior occurred, observer two did not. So we have a disagreement. Interval two, both observers said the behavior did not occur, so agreement. Interval three, we have an agreement. Interval four, we have an agreement. Interval five, we have an agreement. Interval six, we have an agreement. Interval seven, observer one said the behavior did not occur. Observer two said the behavior did occur. So we have a disagreement. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the number of agreements over the total number of intervals or the total numbers of agreements and disagreements and multiply it by 100. So we had um, four, uh, sorry, five agreements, one, two, three, four, five, over seven seven total intervals, which gave us 71.43% IOA. This would not be sufficient because remember we need 80% or more. So we would either need to go back in there, either record the behavior and do some training watching it, or go back and look at our behavioral definition and make sure that we are recording the same behavior. All right, some factors that can affect data collection in IOA is reactivity. So this is the idea that when you are watching somebody, they change their behavior. I like to think of dancing. When I'm by myself in my house, I dance. But when other people are around, I don't really dance. So it's the fact that students know they're being watched, and so they'll change their behavior. And there's a couple ways to fix this. You can watch through the window if that's an option. You can also get used to the kid, used to you, you can also get the students used to you being in the room. So you might wanna go in and observe for a while before you actually go in and officially observe the behavior. So that way they're used to, be, used to you being in the classroom. Observer drift as well. So sometimes we can um, get a little lazy or a little lenient on what we record as a behavior. So we can get a little lenient on our behavioral definition. So going back through and doing some training, reminding ourselves of what the actual behavior is, is important. Um, complexity as well. The more complex your recording system is, then the harder it is to actually record that behavior. And then last but not least, expectancy. So we're human, we all have biases, and a lot of times those biases, basically unintentional, we don't realize that they're happening, but they can affect our recording, our recording systems or our measurement of behavior. So sometimes if you want to see a behavior occur, you do. So keeping in mind those biases and things like that can be really important. All right guys, we talked about reliability, which is IOA. We talked about total agreements, if you have frequency, duration, latency data. We talked about interval agreement, if you did partial interval, whole interval, or momentary time sampling recording. And then we talked briefly about some factors that affect IOA. All right, thanks for listening. If you guys have any questions about this lecture, then please email me. Thanks, guys.